Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Chats with Children. I hope you're safe and well. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by John Burgess, who is General Manager, Abijax Orlando Facility. And today, we're going to be learning more about the recently opened technology centre that Abijax have opened in Orlando, and also about prototype mould making for BFS processes. So first of all, John, it's lovely to see you. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm very, very well, actually. And how is Orlando these days? Is the sun continually to shine down where you are in Florida? Absolutely. It's beating down middle of summer now, so super hot, but uh, we enjoy the sun. Fantastic. Now, before we start talking about the technology center and also about um, prototype mold making for BFS processes, for viewers who are not familiar with Abject, would you mind giving me a very quick overview of the business and what you do? Sure. So Appyject is a public benefit company, meaning a lot of our business decisions are based around, uh, you know, supporting the public and, and getting medications that are safe and effective to them uh, for, for reasonable uh, costs. So that is one of our mottos. We basically are looking to provide safe injections uh, for people all over the world. Brilliant. Now, you recently opened the technology center. So when did you open it? Why did you open it? And what makes it unique? Great question. So we opened in February of this year. It's been operating five, six months. Um, and it is a technology center that is focused around BFS technology, which is a well-proven uh, aseptic filling process, and specifically around mold making and device design. So when we talk about BFS devices, they are typically single unit dose. So they're uh, similar to uh, like a glass vial, but they're a single dose. Um, one of the benefits certainly of the technology. And our goal here is to work with customers to design unique devices. We, we utilize what we call a platform um, of BFS containers, as well as injection molded parts, uh, needles and, and things like that to make a uh, safe and effective uh, injection that can't be reused um, and could be available in all kinds of markets throughout the world. Brilliant. So talking about mold making, so what are the must know facts about mold making or what people really should know about mold making? So we have a couple of blow fill seal machines on site here. Um, and that's one of our, our uh, benefits. Uh, we're sort of a one-stop shop um, in that we can produce prototype molds and we can actually test them on active uh, machinery that will make the, the doses. So the mold making process really starts with the customer and their idea for a device. So we look at things like what is the intended function? Are there pieces that would connect to it? For example, a needle. It's one of our first devices will be a needle connection. So you look at the device, the intended use, the fill size obviously is important for the injection uh, being delivered. So you look at all those inputs and you start to come up with some, you know, geometries and certain designs. You look at the marketing of the device. What does the customer want to show uh, to, their, to their end users? Sure. Um, and we sort of work backwards. So we, we, we go with an idea and then we go backwards and we, we figure out what's what are the limitations of the BFS, but what are also its advantages that we can we can um, take into account? And we sort of build the device into the into the mold so that it it'll run appropriately on the BFS machine and it's a highly scalable operation. So we design the mold um, and we make it specifically for the BFS machine it's intended for. Um, obviously at very high volume. So we use a specific material in the mold. It's called aluminum bronze, uh, highly wear resistant, very good with heat transfer. Right. These are all things that uh, the drug product um, is also affected by. So we have to consider the drug product, the container design and all this all has to work, work properly on the BFS machine. Right, okay. So how is injection molding though used in the design process? So um, the mold is basically designed in a way it's, it's two halves um, and we close a mold around a, 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 what we call a parison, which is an extruded uh, tube of plastic. Um, and we basically are pulling the plastic as it, it's, it's very pliable at the point where it's molten. We pull the plastic against the mold to form a container. 
Right. So um, as it's a continuous process, it, it both it forms the, the plastic container, it fills the container and it seals the container all in one operation. No, no human intervention. So um, our, our mold design is, is that of a continuous process. Um, also takes into account how you how you get the, the drug product in, which is part of the factor is the, the fill size. So um, all those things go together um, and into a functioning BFS mold process. Right, well, you mentioned the fill size, uh, size, which actually leads on to my next question, which is what considerations should manufacturers make before they use BFS and a pre-filled injector for biologics packaging? Yep, good question. So um, most injections are between the 0.5 to 3 ml range, right. which, which is a great sweet spot for blow fill seal technology. Um, we, our first device is about a 0.6 uh, ml fill, so right in there. Um, we, we will have the capability on site, of course, to make different containers for fill volume. So you kind of want to tailor your, tailor your device um, to your fill size. Um, and the, the, the best um, BFS uh, efficiency will come when you have usually a small volume like that. Um, and we intend to have a couple of sort of standard containers that we can uh, fill customers' products in for trials and, and things like that. Right, okay. And, and how does BFS improve or contribute to improve packaging? So the BFS uh, container is great in that it is plastic. It's very tough. So once the, once the container is formed, there's no cap. It's actually molded in. So it's all one, one device. It's a big advantage over say glass where you don't have breakage issues. You don't have shards of, of glass potentially in the container. Um, so it's a very flexible container. You can throw it in a bag, not worry about it. Um, you also have certain ways that the industry of BFS has overcome the inherent issues. That being, um, for example, a water vapor and, and light transmission. So you do some secondary packaging operations with foil pouches um, to prevent those uh, losses. Right. Um, you also have, you know, the advantage of the unit dose in BFS is huge over, um, say, a multi-dose glass file where you have to draw with a needle and inject uh, several times to get all the doses. The BFS uh, platform for AppEject is, is especially great because all of the devices, all of the pieces of the device are used once and they're discarded. So there's no mix-ups, there's no uh, chance of infecting others with reused needles or anything like that. So it's a, it's a big part of what we do because we plan to get into some of the developing markets where uh, that, that is a big problem, believe it or not. Sure. So if you wanna know more about what you're doing there in terms of the technology center and the different things you're doing with BFS, where can they get more information? So we have a great website, um, has some contact uh, information on it. Um, you can also contact me directly on LinkedIn. I'm on there. Um, and there's a number of ways to reach out um, if you just uh, Google App Eject. Hopefully you'll, you'll be seeing ads as well for us. We, we promote our, ourselves quite well, I think. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll put the link for App Eject above the video anyway, so people can click directly on it. And as you say, you're very active on LinkedIn as well. So I would certainly check out the LinkedIn page viewers if you want to learn more. So, well, John, thank you very much for taking time out to give me that quick overview of the Technology Centre and also about the mold making with BFS processes. It's really interesting. And good luck with the Technology Centre. I mean, obviously, it's very exciting to have a brand new facility sitting there yeah. and uh, filling it up with hopefully lots of different projects as well, exciting new projects that you're doing. As And I look forward, hopefully, maybe to come down and seeing it in person at some point. Absolutely. Um, so there you go, viewers. If you'd like to know more about Abijek, what they're doing at the Technology Centre, and also about prototype mold making for BFS processes and BFS in, uh, Abijek solutions in general, then check out their website, check out the LinkedIn page. Um, and John, all I to say is thank you very much for your time and viewers. Thank you for watching. Until next time, as always, stay well and stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you.